This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist. And I would like to welcome you to One Month to a Better Board. In this month of February 2017, I'm going to go through and do a series of podcasts talking about making your board more effective. I'm going to start out with the legal requirements that a board has around compliance, move into why a board needs a compliance committee and compliance expertise at the board. I'm going to talk about how the CCO should report to the board and questions that a board compliance committee should ask of a CCO. We're going to take a look at some government guidance and business experience around compliance in the board. We're going to talk about some board failures. We're going to talk about how boards do investigations. We're going to look at boards and internal controls. I'm going to end with a series of specific questions that a board should ask of its chief compliance officer. And on my final day, I'll detail 20 questions that every board should ask of its chief compliance officer. Each day, I will give you a short 10-minute or so podcast with three key takeaways for that day. And I will accompany each podcast with text that you can use. The 20 questions that I referenced will be provided on the final day of February. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey to one month to a more effective board. Welcome to Day 15, the board's role in corporate hiring. Unfortunately, many companies only use routine background checks, even at this level, and employment screening typically only finds about 1% of adverse issues in executives' backgrounds. Think this doesn't happen to major U.S. corporations? Well, in 2012, Yahoo hired a new CEO, Scott Thompson, who had incorrect information listed on his online biography stating that he had a computer science degree in addition to an accounting degree. While he did have the accounting degree, the computer science degree was nowhere to be found. The implications went beyond activist shareholder accusations to reflect on the board for not vetting his background more carefully. The company had been exposed to claims of providing false information to the SEC and potential stockholder lawsuits. CEO Thompson only lasted 120 days on the Yahoo board, and it cost the company over $7 million and seriously damaged and tarnished its business reputation, or excuse me, its reputation in the business community. So I recently visited with Candace Tao, the CEO at Infortal, who is a background, deep background, deep dive due diligence firm. And one of the roles that she fulfills is providing executive due diligence. And I asked her about the difference in executive due diligence and executive background checks. And as she explained it, checking a potential executive's background can go a long way in preventing a bad hire and saving the company financial losses, both in terms of direct costs and indirect costs, such as reputation and negative news headlines and other reputational damages. But there is a substantial difference in what you get for your investment in doing a background search versus a deep dive due diligence on prospective hires. Obviously, this is true with new board members as well, as adverse media attention can create PR nightmares for both the board and extensive reputational damage that can last for years. Uh, not surprisingly, nonprofits are also at risk from this type of uh, behavior. When evaluating a prospect for business mergers or acquisitions, it's also important to conduct executive screening as, to, as the overall deal price may be affected if there are serious issues with the executive team or it later comes to light that there were serious is issues such as bribery or corruption. Obviously, the, if the company was engaging in violations of the FCPA, whether it was Subject to the FP, FCPA at the time or not, this is something that you need to know. So most companies screen their executives using uh, routine background checks, and these are the types of checks that are conducted for all levels of employees consisting of basic public record searches, 
uh, and database searches. The searches are conducted by companies through one or multiple jurisdictional databases containing aggregated data, collections of data from various entities. These checks typically are limited to a five-component review, including criminal records, employment verica- verification, degree or educational verification, social security validation, address verification, and sometimes credit history. But these are relatively limited searches. There is no one database that contains all information. In some cases, records need to be accessed in person to ensure that the correct information is reported about the specific person and not someone else of the same name. Criminal records can be searched using a date of birth, and since a person's social security numbers typically do not appear in criminal files. Additionally, you need to do a statewide and nationwide searches. Obviously, these routine background checks are often cheap to conduct and quick to turn around, but there are many issues, as Tal explained, using them as a sole investigative tool. These include the greatly varying quantity and quality of the data, no results being returned even though records exist due to the search criteria, and data returned on persons with the same or similar names or mistaken identities. So what's an executive due diligence? Well, this looks like takes an in-depth look at all available public records, including criminal history, civil litigation, financial and legal issues, relationships with other companies, board and advisory positions, reputational information, certainly social media information, misrepresented educational and overstated work history, behavioral issues such as litigiousness, and uh, undisclosed or other adverse issues. Executive due diligence is certainly more costly than an executive background check, and it may take more time, but the information is gathered, the information which is gathered is extremely valuable and can save the company substantially more down the line. A high quality due diligence review can find important information that would not be returned <clears throat> some of these without an executive background check, and some of these can include theft of IP, hidden aliases, interstate bankruptcies, previously mentioned litigious behavior, signs of malfeasance with or without criminal convictions, negative medias, uh, social medias, negatives, uh, undisclosed businesses or other board level involvement, uh, undisclosed business ownership, significant numbers of name changes, uh, and other negative issues. So the you can see the difference between the routine background check and the executive due diligence is a significant consideration. And it also would include, I think, a significant interview process of prior employers, prior colleagues, prior boards, uh, directors <clears throat> that the candidate may have sat on. And you need to have a full picture of who you're taking a look at and who you're considering bringing on board to your company, on board to your board. Or how about in the mergers and acquisition situation? Have you considered the background of the people that you are uh, purchasing or the company that uh, you're purchasing or joint venturing with? So you need to conduct an executive due diligence search when hiring a new executive, such as CEO or chief compliance officer, acquiring a new business through mergers and acquisitions or joint venture, Contracting with third-party business partners, Uh, if you're in the FCPA space, you certainly know this. Selecting new new board members or even screening board members. It's an important step in the board's obligation to perform this executive due diligence and background check. And something that uh, every board should be doing now, uh, simply in the this era of social media, when so much is available to you on a public basis, the board members or senior execs you hire, uh, life will be uh, an open book in terms of all of the social media, Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those are sources that can be data mined by anyone now. So what are your three key takeaways from today? Well, first of all, do not forget the cost. Uh, as Tony Heiss, the uh, Zappos CEO, uh, has said, Bad hires have cost his company well over $100 million. At the executive level, this is uh, much higher. The Yahoo experience regarding Scott Thompson in 2012 cost the company $7 million. Recall the number two. Recall the difference between executive background checks and executive due diligence. Due diligence is a much deeper dive, uh, including uh, interviews, including uh, interstate investigations, and perhaps even international investigations. And do not forget that 20% of 
um, executives fail a deep level due diligence check and have issues which may cause exposure to the corporations of any size. This is uh, really a very high number, and this is something that you need to know before you go into business with someone, whether that business is as a senior executive, whether it's as a new board member, or whether it's as a business partner, uh, a joint venture partner, or an M&A acquisition, or merger and acquisition. So this is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening to Day 15, and I hope you will join me tomorrow for Day 16 to one month to a better board. This is Tom Fox. Thank you for joining for today's episode of 30 Days to a Better Board. This series is based on my seminal work, Doing Compliance, Design, Create, and Implement an Effective Compliance Program. It's available from Compliance Week, and you can check it out on their website, complianceweek.com. I hope you will join me tomorrow for another episode.